Okay, so hopefully everyone's back and ready to keep going. So we'll move on now to the second content block for today, which is a little bit less content than content block one. Content block one was a bit full on. This one is a little, a little more relaxed, slightly. Okay, so as I mentioned right at the start, when I was going through the definitions and terms and the assumptions called um, assumptions, qualitative characteristics, and elements. Um, a big difference between accounting units one and two and accounting units three and four is the type of businesses that we deal with. So in units one and two, you might have dealt with both trading and service businesses um, with a range of ownership types. Um, but moving forward, we'll only be dealing with trading businesses that have one owner. So a trading business is a business that buys inventory from suppliers, applies a markup, and then sells the inventory at a higher price to make a profit. So common examples of trading businesses are clothing stores, um, but really it can be any business that sells physical products instead of selling a service. So basically trading businesses buy inventory, jack up the price, and then resell the inventory. Uh, but what that means is that inventory is the main source of revenue for a trading business. And because of this, it's also one of the most important assets that a trading business has. Okay, so for transactions that involve inventory, we use what's called an inventory card. And this is what an inventory card looks like. At the top of the inventory card is the information about the specific inventory that the card is talking about. So you can see the item name, which is extra large blue shirts, the item code, which is D4A0375, the item location within the store, which is aisle 8. So in this case, this is obviously some sort of clothing store and they have their inventory organized in aisles. Um, that you can walk down which might not be true for every single store like I don't know they might have sections like how Kmart has like women's men's children's like stuff like that um, and then also included in that information at the top of the card is the name of the supplier that the business has purchased this item from which in this case is Atlantic Apparel Warehouse And then there will be, it's important to note that there will be a separate inventory card for every single specific type of item of inventory that the business has. So there'll be a completely different inventory card for large blue shirts and for small blue sh shirts and for medium blue shirts and for extra, extra large blue shirts and for extra small blue shirts. Um, and there'll be a completely different set of cards for red shirts. So there'll be a separate separate card for extra small red shirts, for small red shirts, for medium red shirts, for large red shirts, and for extra large red shirts. And then a different set of cards for green shirts. So as you can imagine, um, when it comes to big businesses, like for example, imagine, imagine Kmart, um, they would just have thousands and thousands of inventory cards. Um, because for every single different type of product that they that they have, for example, shirts, um, pants, um, you know, toys, like Kmart sells everything <laughs> pretty much. Um, for every single different type of inventory product that they have, there'll be a different set of inventory cards. And then even just within that set, there'll be so many, like there'll be, you have to um, do a separate one for each different color, for each different size, for each different type of fabric, like, there, there will just be so many um, inventory cards. Um, but obviously, when we think about smaller businesses, um, that might not be true. Um, for example, I don't know, a business that makes um, all of the clothes that it sells. For example, like a crocheting business. Um, because the business is making it themselves and then selling it, um, it's not going to have as much um, inventory stock as much of a range but it's also possible for 
a small business to still have a really big range of products. For example, think about those like small businesses that are kind of like $2 shops, like they kind of sell everything. Um, like that's the whole appeal of a $2 shop. It's like you can walk in and find almost anything and spend, you know, only $2. Um, but you know, they still have a really large range of products, but really those $2 shops are small businesses, you know, they're run by locals. Um, but yeah, most, most likely, um, a small business will have a very specific type of imagery that they sell. Like you won't find, well, with exceptions, obviously, but you won't tend to find a small business that sells kind of everything. Um, for example, you might have um, a small business that sells gardening supplies or a small business that sells chairs, like different types of chairs and couches. But that's just for example. So yeah, depending on how big uh, a business's inventory range is, um, there can be a lot of inventory cards that the business has to keep track of. Okay. So now we'll break down the image, the actual columns of the imagery card. So the first column in the imagery card is date. So under this, we write the transaction date. So um, the day and month. <clears throat> the next column is details. So under details, we write the source document that verifies the transaction. So for example, this could be invoice 12 or receipt 4 or memo 8. The next section of columns is the in column and within the in column uh, we enter transactions that involve inventory that is coming into the business. So for example when we purchase inventory we're spending money and we're getting more inventory. So that inventory that we're purchasing is coming into the business. Um, so if that makes sense. And then within that in column it's broken up into three sub columns. Um, so we have to enter the quantity, which is the number of items, the cost, which is the cost per item, and the total, which is the total price of that inventory that is coming into the business. So for example, with a purchase of inventory, let's say we're purchasing, you know, five shirts, um, five extra large blue shirts, each shirt cost $10, and so the total is $50. So you would do quantity, 10 um, cost five dollars total fifty dollars or no I think it was the other way around five shares for ten dollars or whatever it was <laughs> I don't remember what I said so yeah that's you get the point like it's quantity cost per item and total cost for all of the items and then it's kind of similar with the out column so the out column is used for transactions that involve inventory leaving the business so for example when we sell inventory um, or even drawings like the owner taking inventory out of the business with both of the both of those transaction um, transactions it involves inventory leaving the business to go to you know that customer or to go to the owner um, and then again it's broken up into three sub columns so we enter the quantity cost per item and total cost of the inventory going out of the business and then the final column is the balance column and this is where we record the inventory that the business has left on hand so after the inventory is coming in or after the inventory is going out what is the remaining balance that the business that the business has in their store or um, kind of that the business has remaining um, and again we write the quantity um, the number of items, the cost per item, and the total cost of all of the inventory that the business has remaining on hand. Okay, this is something that is super, super important when it comes to inventory cards. It's really, really important to note that all prices in the inventory card and every single inventory card um, are cost prices um, and they don't include any GST. Um, and then again, um, there are different imagery cards for each imagery line. So it's really, really important that you remember that when we are entering transactions in the imagery card, we always enter cost prices, never selling prices. Even if we're recording a sale of inventory, which obviously involves imagery going out of the business, we would never ever write the selling price in the imagery card. Uh, we only would write the cost price. So this means there are 
no selling prices in Inventory Card, and all of the prices, even the cost prices, are excluding GST. So we never include GST in any of the amounts. And one of the easiest mistakes that people make with Inventory Cards is to include a selling price or to include the GST of the price. So that's really, really important to remember. Okay, now that we've gone through that, let's do an example together. So here's our example. We're recording for the month of February. So because of that, it's telling us that the opening balance at the start of February um, or at the start of the reporting period. And that opening balance is 20 extra large blue shirts, each valued at $10. So the first thing we need to do is enter this opening balance into the inventory card. So under date, we would write February 1st because it's the opening balance. So it's the start of the period, which is the first of the month. And then under balance, um, sorry, under details, we have balance because it's opening balance. And then under the balance column, we have the quantity, cost, and total price of the shares on hand, and that's 20 shares at $10 each, which is a total price of $200. So again, to get the total, we multiply quantity by cost. It's important to note that under details I've written balance, um, so I know I told you that the details column is for source documents, but this is one example of an exception to that. So when we're recording, a transaction will write the source document under details, but because we're only entering an opening balance in this case, which is not a transaction, we write balance. And this only applies for opening balances. Okay, here's the next example. So we have our first transaction of the month. So on February 4th um, is the first transaction of the month that involves this specific item. So this doesn't mean that this is the first transaction of the entire month. It's only the first transaction that involves extra large blue shirts. So say on the 2nd of February, the business sold a whole bunch of green shirts, but unfortunately this inventory card is only talking about extra large blue shirts. So we only write, a, uh, we'll only enter a transaction into this inventory card if it involves extra large blue shirts. Okay, and the specific transaction is that the business has purchased 25 extra large blue shirts for $10 per shirt. And you can see that they've given us the source document used to verify this transaction, which is invoice 101. And when we enter this transaction, this is what it looks like. So under date is the transaction date, which is February 4th. Under details is invoice 101, which is the source document that verifies the transaction. And because this is a purchase, it involves inventory coming into the business. So it goes into the in column. And under the in column, we've recorded the quantity, cost per shirt, and total price of the inventory purchased. So 25 shirts at $10 each, which is a total cost price of $250. And note that all of these prices are cost prices and they do not include GST. So you can see in the question, it says plus GST. So that would be $11 including GST, but in this case, we're not including GST. And again, this goes back to the main rules about prices in the inventory card, which is that it's always cost prices and never includes GST. And finally, in the balance column, you can see that the balance of inventory on hand has changed. It's been updated. So it's gone from 20 shares to 45 shares. So inventory that has come into the business has been added on to the balance. Okay, moving on, here's our second transaction for the period that involves extra large blue shirts. So on the 7th of February, the business sold five of these shirts for a total selling price of $165, including GST. And the source document that verifies this transaction is Receipt 13. And this is what that entry looks like. So the transaction date, 7th of Feb, is written under date. And under details is receipt 13 that verifies the transaction. The transaction has been entered into the out column of the card because sales of inventory involve inventory leaving the business or inventory going out of the business. 
Under the out column, we've recorded the quantity, cost per shirt, and total price of the infantry sold. So that's five shirts at $10 per shirt, which is a total price of $50. And the question tells us that the shirts sold for $150 excluding GST, which is um, a selling price of $30 per shirt. Um, but this price is not included in the inventory card at all, and that's because we have to use the cost price of the shirts, which is $10 per shirt. Because again, remember, cost price is no GST. And again, the balance column has been updated. It's gone from 45 shirts down to 40 shirts on hand. So the inventory that has left the business or the inventory that has gone out of the business has been subtracted from the balance of inventory on hand.